I was going to spend this week looking at historical evidence to support the Bible, but then inflatable banana-loving Matt Powell decided he wanted to make some claims about atheists that needed looking at. And since his video had 666 views at the time of me noticing it, I took that as a sign. One that could never be demonstrated. That was just for funnies. Hello, I'm The Skeptic. I watch videos on YouTube that make extraordinary claims, whether that's flat earth or strange conspiracies, but mostly the claim that a god is real, and then explain why I can't accept their position. Before we get into today's video, please do subscribe, hit that bell notification to be alerted for my next video, and drop a like. That would be awesome. In this internetiate video, the owner of the famous Dr. Peel, Matt Powell, has noticed something about atheists. He actually suggested that atheist YouTubers were stuck in a fantasy land. A bold statement from someone who believes the Earth is only a few thousand years old. And since I am one of those atheist YouTubers, I decided to see if his observations about me were accurate. Take it away, Dr. Banana. I, I mean, Matt. One of the things that has really stuck out to me recently is the fact that these atheists that I'm dealing with on the internet, about 90% of them always have these posters of Final Fantasy or Mario Kart or Super Mario Brothers in their background of their videos. I'm not sure why you'd pick this kind of music to go with this content. This is more like music for those rehoming a dog commercials. You've got the voiceover all wrong here, Matt. Here, try this. For just $2 a month, you could help buy Matt Powell a new inflatable banana to add to his collection. Much better. Also, so what? People like comics and games. What's the issue here, Matthew? I really hope Dr. Peel is a doctor of psychology. I'd suggest some therapy if you were denied fun things like comics and video games when you were younger. There could be some serious resentment towards your parents you didn't realize was there. This to me is kind of like a dead giveaway. A dead giveaway? A dead giveaway to what? Because these people, they're obviously living in a fantasy land. Obviously, huh? Oh, do tell why exactly. By believing that the world popped into existence uncaused with no god. Only because a god that creates universes hasn't been demonstrated. I'm pretty certain your position is a god created the universe because it says so in a book. Who is living in a fantasy now? And popped into existence uncaused? You can't just toss words around like that, though you do, so I'm not surprised really. I mean, that in and of itself requires belief in magic, belief in superstition, if you will. Or just a basic understanding in science. But okay, Matt, if it makes you feel better, sure, magic and superstition. Don't walk under a ladder or a whole new universe may pop into existence uncaused. But the fact is that this crowd has really never grown out of Tune It Network. They haven't grown out of Nickelodeon. And why does that matter? At least there aren't shows on Nickelodeon claiming that the Earth was made by a giant floaty undemonstrated being, nor does it show cartoons that will send you to hell for not watching them. Most of them on the internet that do response videos to me or other creation apologists, they have literal fantasy stuff hanging up in their background. I'm doing a response right now. I have nothing but acoustic foam behind me. No fantasy stuff. Now what? Does that mean you take my response more seriously? They've got Marvel Comics hanging everywhere. They never grew out of Super Nintendo. And you never grew out of believing in something that's never been demonstrated. So what? And I would never usually reply to a straw man with hypocrisy, but it just seems fitting here. Sure, build up an atheist character that likes video games and superheroes. It doesn't suddenly make a god exist. It just makes the atheists you're imagining really fun. I mean, this is the crowd that we're dealing with. Knowing Matt Powell and having seen one of Matt Powell's sermons and then seeing him personally off to the side, it's not just an online, you know, duplicitous character thing. It is a, that is him. Confirmed by another, he just hates fun things. Comics, cartoons and video games. What a boring, boring life. If it is true, that is. I figured it would be appropriate to really point this out because this is the same crowd that's coming after your children right now. Whoa, 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 that sounds wrong. Atheists, as far as I'm aware, aren't child catchers. Yeah. 
And how awful to teach kids to think with rationality and ask questions. What terrible, terrible people non-believers are. With their Nickelodeon cartoons, Marvel superheroes and Mario video games. The reason that they create cartoons and try to tell you why the Bible's wrong is because they want to infiltrate the minds of the youth. I think, Mr. Powell, that it would be better to ask atheists why they say the Bible is incorrect. In my case, it has nothing to do with infiltrating the minds of the youth. It's just to point out that the reason you have reached the conclusions you have are extremely unconvincing to me. I'm almost sure Sir Sick doesn't care if kids watch his content with his colourful language. Logic probably has his character because it looks cool, and Paul Ogia is just really good good at what he does with his cartoony appearance. In fact, I had this Twitter conversation with Sir Sick. As you can see, not concerned if kids look at his content. They want to change their mind. They want to get them thinking that there is no God. Misery loves company. I'd hardly say playing video games and watching cartoons is a miserable way to live, Matt. Plus, it's not about convincing anyone that there is no God. It's about not accepting the claims that there is one. They're making it their purpose to tell everybody that there is no purpose. And if you have children that have been influenced by these guys, just point out to your kids that these are a bunch of adults that have never grown out of childhood. Terrible, huh? Adults that have fun are corrupting the minds of younglings. Matt must be the life of every party. Turn those cartoons off, stop playing video games. We're going to sit in the corner and talk about the color beige. Why else would they have Dragon Ball Z in the background? Or Star Fox? I mean, it just, to me, it's a dead giveaway. We're dealing with a crowd of people that are literally stuck in their childhood and they've never grown out of it. However, they can think rationally and come to the conclusion that they're not convinced that there are any gods. And yet, you're an adult that reads a book and believes that dinosaurs and humans were around at the same time. You believe the Flintstones! But of course, this is the first crowd to tell us that the Bible's wrong. This is the first crowd to come and tell us that dinosaurs farted themselves to death. There's a difference between saying the Bible is wrong and saying I don't accept what the Bible says as it's never been demonstrated to be the word of a god. And as for dinosaurs farting their way to death, that's a ridiculous simplification of a theory that suggests methane and flatulence could have contributed to their death, as well as a massive meteor. That's all much more believable than dinos being hunted to extinction. The Photoshop on these is just silly. I guess trying to make actual science sound stupid is your way of dismissing it, rather than offering evidence to the contrary. Or that squids and octopi rode on a comet from outer space into our Earth and crash-landed to evolve and to continue their evolution on Earth. That's not exactly what is suggested. It's a fun proposal being explored that retroviruses that came from space on rocks could have added new DNA sequences to the existing genomes already on Earth, adding to the evolutionary process over millions of years. That's not the same as an octopus riding on a comet. I hope I said that eloquently, by the way. And trying to make a mockery out of a scientific suggestion just makes you look like more of an inflatable banana-loving fool. Of course, the crowd that tells us that the Bible is incorrect and that Jesus was just a man and not God is the very crowd that believes that monkeys made a sea voyage from Africa to South America on rafts. Oh, great. This argument that you cling to so many times. I could be wrong, but it sounds as though in your head, when you say raft, you're imagining a floaty device built out of trees. Natural disasters can cause debris to leave the land and float on the sea. Who knows how big those floating survival pods were? And when it's suggested that the first ancestors of today's monkeys made it from Africa to South America, the distance was around a quarter of what it is today because, you know, plate tectonics? And I say, you know, but you may not know because you think that the Grand Canyon was formed in a week. That they literally surfed from Africa to South America. One guy responded to me recently. He goes, well, that, that sounds crazy. Let's clarify. It wasn't a surfboard. It was a log or some seaweed. So we have seen evidence, plenty of evidence, for uh, animals drifting on logs, drifting on seaweed, drifting on 
whatever through the ocean. I mean, that's pretty desperate when you're saying that monkeys actually rafted on seaweed across the ocean. It's only one of many suggestions, Matthew. It makes far more sense than a bearded supernatural undemonstrated being made it that way. Because at least it's been demonstrated that animals sit on logs and seaweed whilst floating on water. I mean, give me a break. Um, you know, it just, to me, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, your inability to grasp concepts that aren't written in a book claiming to be the word of a deity leaves me speechless too. <laughs> Internet atheists and non-believers, I tried, okay? <laughs> I tried my best. I can honestly say that I've tried my best to help you understand the world around you. It's okay, Matt. I think I can handle that on my own. It's not up to you to convince the rest of the world that you're right. If there was a god, it'd be easier for it to convince the world of its existence, rather than getting folks like you to do a really, really bad job of it. If you don't want to understand the world around you, if you want to continue living in Toon Network land or Nickelodeon land, like your posters have demonstrated, I can't help you. Even your straw man's dodging your attacks. What people enjoy outside of not being convinced of a god or gods is absolutely irrelevant. You have to grow out of childhood into adulthood. Hey, folks, ignore Matt. He clearly got out of the wrong side of bed this morning and joined the fun police. Go and enjoy life. Watch Nickelodeon. Don't listen to a guy that has never demonstrated the God that he believes in. You go and play video games and you have a bloody good time too. The Bible says that when I became a man, I put away childish things. I don't care what the Bible says, Matt. Really, I honestly don't give a dead pterodactyl's butt what the Bible says. When you have posters of literal Nickelodeon, SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward in your background, that is such a dead giveaway that you've never grown out of Marvel Comics. So what? I really don't see your point. It still doesn't make the god you believe in magically exist. That you've never grown out of PBS. That you've never grown out of the things that you need to grow out of. I don't do these videos to be condescending towards you if you are one of these folks. I simply point this out because it's kind of the elephant in the room. No, no. The elephant in the room is the lack of a demonstration of your claims and trying to deflect by saying, well, you like superhero comics. Well, it just makes you look like a really unhappy individual. I'm actually starting to pity you like Bilbo did with Gollum. I mean, when you're going around saying there is no God, there is no God, and proclaiming this while you have posters of literal kids material on your wall as a 40 or 50 or 60 year old man or woman. <sighs> Grow up. Wow. So instead of defending the claim by offering evidence, you attack what people enjoy in their personal lives. Wow, Matt, just wow. You went from being a bit of a Wally to being a real jerk. What folks enjoy in their own time has no bearing on whether they're convinced of a god. What happens when someone over the age of 35 and does believe in a god also likes video games and Nickelodeon? Can you not take their belief seriously? Is this a no true theist watches cartoons? I really hope you're not doing that. Let loose, Matt. Have some fun. Play some Fortnite. You might even smile whilst having a good time. <laughs> See? It's not often I feel compelled to respond to a video like this, but it was quite therapeutic. How would you have responded to Matt? Let me know in the section below. I'm going to skeptic this video is complete and Matt Powell official, officially being a bit of a knob. Thanks to all those folks that have joined me so far on Patreon, second tier and above perks will start to be rolled out as of next week. Feel free to become a tick of some sort, the link is in the description. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the Skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday.